Hi, I'm Phil Hill. Welcome to eLiterate TV's series on personalized learning. In our last episode, we heard about ASU's bold ambition to provide many more students with a high quality education at an affordable price using technology-enabled programs. But what does that look like on the ground? In this episode, we'll look at an online lab science course developed at ASU that creates a course experience that enables students to truly engage in the basic science portion of their general education requirements. Uh, well, when I first got to ASU, one of the first things I, I volunteered to do was to teach a large introductory chemistry class, you know, 150, 200 students. And, um, and I enjoyed it. I did pretty well at it. I got a teaching award for it. But I felt this is not a very good way to teach introductory science, and especially, especially to, to non-science majors, mm -hmm. for whom this may be, you know, the last the last contact point they have with formal science education. Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, it's, it's, um, it's not a very good way to do this because the lecture mode is inherently passive, right? It's inherently communicating the notion that uh, the teacher is the expert mm -hmm. and, and the student is supposed to somehow receive the wisdom from the expert, yes. which is not what science is, right? So science is really about problem solving. It's about learning how to get to answers. Um, and the lecture mode just, it, you're continually fighting against that. Mm -hmm. And there are, there are creative ways to try to do that. Um, and you can have laboratory courses that try to do that. But again, when you have 150, 200 students, your laboratory course, it's very, hard to, it's very hard to break that down into small groups and get to the point where students are really doing true inquiry-guided mm -hmm. stuff. And there was actually, there was a very influential group that was meeting here regularly around that time, led by the, 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 the vice president of research at that time, uh, John, John Fink. And there was, it was a group that met for lunch every month or so. Mm -hmm. And one of the topics that we started talking about at one point was uses of, uses of games in education yeah. and video games in education. And I started thinking at that point, well, couldn't we somehow do like a gaming-oriented way of teaching science. And I wasn't the only one to think that, but uh, I, started thinking, I started thinking about it at that point. And the response I got was, yeah, but it's too expensive. You can't, that would be yeah. great, but you'd spend millions of dollars to produce something and yeah. no one's gonna spend that kind of money. And, and I started thinking, oh, okay, all right. Yeah, but still, shouldn't, this, shouldn't, there, should, shouldn't there be a way to do this? Yeah. And right about that time, ASU Online was really starting to start up seriously. And I, I got together with, with Phil here. And um, uh, Phil was feeling kind of experimental at that point. And he said, okay, blank sheet of paper, what would you do, mm -hmm. right? And my first thought was, well, I would build it as a game. Mm -hmm. um, I would use um, the search for life in the universe. I'm in the School of Earth and Space Exploration. So I'd use the search for life in the universe as the, as the narrative hook yep. on which to teach lots of um, basic science concepts. And the, 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 the vision of the course would be, okay, you, each student gets an individualized field of stars. It's randomized for each student. Mm -hmm. And uh, your job is to find and characterize an inhabited world in that field of stars. Yep. And the course would all be about learning the science along the way that you need to learn in order to navigate this, this game-like challenge. But the team initially found that the traditional technologies on campus were not suited to support this new personalized learning approach. Within a traditional system that was fairly difficult, traditional learning management systems aren't really set up to, uh, to allow a lot of interactivity. They're more designed to let you do things that you would normally do in a traditional classroom, multiple choice uh, tests, quizzes, uh, turning in papers, uploading, downloading things. Um, so it didn't really allow us, especially when you're teaching science. When you're teaching science, you know, a range of possibilities are viable answers. And oftentimes when we teach science, we're more interested in what you're not allowed to do rather than what you're allowed to do. And traditional LMSs don't allow you to really program in huge parameter spaces that you can work with. They're basically looking for what are the exact correct answers you are allowed to accept. I was brought into the picture once Ariel decided that this could be an interesting way to go and I started playing around with the system. I instantly fell in love with it because it was basically like PowerPoint. I could drop whatever I wanted, wherever I wanted, and then wire it up to behave the way I wanted it to behave. So now instead of painstakingly programming all the 60 possible answers that a student might write that are acceptable, I can all of a sudden set up a page to take any answer I want and evaluate it in real time. And I no longer have to program those 60 answers. I could just say, here are the range of answers that are acceptable, and it would work with that. And this was the Smart Sparrow system? This was the Smart Sparrow system, correct. Um, 
it was it was really eye opening because it 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 allowed so many more possibilities. It was it was literally a blank canvas where I could put whatever I wanted. Even non science majors seemed to be engaged with the new course. Well, I was kind of expecting, you know, a lot of reading out of either probably buy a textbook and then I was going to have to have discussions with, with people uh, on the message boards and then I would be writing papers and stuff like that because uh, that's what a lot of online coursework is like. Um, but no, this one, it had a whole concept in it and I, I'd heard of um, the Drake equation before, which is what the whole class is based off of. Um, but I'd never seen a, a class kind of structured around a topic like this one. Um, you know, each week in that class, I got thrown in a completely different discipline, um, like a fish out of water. You know, I, I know rocks, you know, so week like four or five was good for me, but the first week is, is like astronomy and physics. And then the next week, um, you're doing chemistry. And the week after that, then geology, and then biology. And then you even get into like some philosophical questions. And, um, you know, I've never had a class that asked so many different types of questions. Sure. It, did you find the same thing? Uh, my experiences were very similar. And what amazed me the most about it was more how the course was centered upon building concept. It wasn't about hammering in detail. They weren't trying to test you on how much can you remember out of what we're feeding you. Mm -hmm. It's you go through the slides, you go through the different sections, and you are building conceptual knowledge while you are doing it. Once you've demonstrated that you can actually apply the concept that they are teaching you, then you can move forward. And until that happens, you're going to be stuck exactly where you are, and you're going to have to ask help from other students in the class. You're going to have to use the resources available. They want you to learn how to solve problems. They want you to learn how to apply the concepts and the they want you to do it in a way that's going to work best for you. So it's so it's multidisciplinary, very various disciplines, but all held together by project problem solving around Drake's equation. Yeah, we, one concept really ties it all together. And if you want to answer those questions around that kind of problem, like you know, is there life out there? Are we alone? You can't do that with just like astronomy. You can't do that with just biology. It's it touches everything. I mean, from like sociology down to like physics. Uh -huh. And those are very, very different disciplines. And so you have to be adaptable. Uh -huh. But I mean, if you rise to that kind of a challenge, uh, I don't know, it's, it's, I can honestly say, like I'm not, this is not hyperbole or anything. It is, it is my favorite class I've taken at this college. And it's a half semester online course. Yeah. By far the best course I've taken and I've recommended it to everybody I've talked to since. And when you get stuck, which is inevitably going to occur for any student that takes it. I don't think there was a single student in my class that did not get stuck at some point mm -hmm. in each lesson, if not every other lesson. I know I did many times. The instructors also had the Piazza discussion board available mm -hmm. as a tool so that when you got stuck, you go onto the Piazza discussion board, you check to see if anybody else has had the same problem as you, you look at the answers that they've been able to get from the community of students and instructors. And if nobody else has run into the same problem, you post your own question. You start a discussion. And it's probably the only time I've ever seen a discussion board used within a course more by the students than by the instructors. It wasn't enforced upon us, but it was necessary for us to be able to work through the course. We needed that tool there. And when I was taking it, I was very lucky to have instructors that were quite frequently on the discussion board, spending inordinate amounts of time dedicated to their students and helping work through the solutions to the problems. Mm -hmm. They wouldn't give you answers. They would help you think about how to solve the problem. Yep. Well, what have you done? Yep. What have you not done? <laughs> so similar experience, or how would you describe a typical week? I didn't change any of the defaults in that online program, but my typical week, you know, when I start off in the morning, um, I don't know, there's probably a lot of people out there, the first thing they do is pick up their phone in the morning as soon as they put their glasses on or contacts. Um, and every four hours, I get an email from the bulletin board system that tells me all of the traffic that happened, you know, in that last four hours or overnight. Um, so I'm constantly just opening up the emails. They go straight to my phone. 
and I look at it and I go, oh, okay, I haven't started on, let's say like, I haven't started on like the carbon cycle yet, but these people already have and they ran into this glitch. So now I already know before I even get there that um, you know, there's gonna be a problem with this that I'm gonna have to think a little bit out of the box because other people have hit that roadblock. Um, and I didn't even ask for that. It just comes to my email box. And then one of the great p parts of the online tool is the entire discussion forum has a search engine built up at the top, just like you know, using a, you know, a, a Google search engine. So if you have specific, a specific problem, you can just type in the keywords and it'll show you every single person that's talking about that particular section. And other than having to like, yeah, go through a bulletin board system and like open every single comment and read it through, so. Based on what we have heard from students in the class, it does appear possible for a large number of students to feel challenged by the course and feel a sense of their own agency. But it's not easy and it's not cheap to develop. In the next episode, we'll hear about ASU's efforts to do the same with the remedial math course and about how the approach changes the roles of faculty and teaching assistants.